All right, welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. Where we try and figure things out with, with what we have. So today we're gonna try and put this rebuilt transmission back in the Peterbilt. Lovely spring day here in Alberta. Oh, thank goodness I don't work outside anymore. All right, so if you're wondering why I had to push this thing into the garage, it's because I don't have any way to, to lift in here. And as I've mentioned, I've got my friend Don there making me a, a gantry crane, but it isn't quite ready yet. So I still don't have a way to pick anything in the shop. So what I did was I brought this back from the gear center and I had to pick it in my other garage with my from the rafters with the chain fall. So then I set it down on the ground and then of course I used my side by side to push it in here. But then I was thinking, well, how the heck am I gonna get the Brownie, this four speed auxiliary transmission off the pallet and onto this and onto the uh, transmission jack. So I figured I had to come up with some way to, to pick it and lift it. So what I did was I ended up looking on Kijiji, which is kind of like the Canadian Craigslist and I found this, this used engine hoist, which I'm sure will come in handy on my project somewhere along the way down the road as well. So I picked this up, uh, we'll, hopefully it works. We'll try and put it together and then figure out a way to, to lift this up and put it on the transmission jack. So while I'm farting around with that, I figured, uh, figured you might enjoy watching Josh from the gear center rebuild this, rebuild this four speed in under two minutes. So I guess you get what you pay for. So this, the, the arm on here fits over this, but it doesn't actually slide forward. It's uh, what I, the only I can figure out is I think I'm missing a piece. I think there should be a square channel that goes in there and then you could set it at different uh, lengths with the bolts and then it goes in this arm as well. So you have the, the full length 
but that was missing. I don't know if the guy forgot to forgot to give it to me or just didn't tell me that it was missing. But either way, we can fix that later on and I think it'll still work because I was able to shimmy this thing far enough forward to pick it. So let's see if it's if it's actually going to work. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. <sighs> now, of course, get that out of the way, Mark. There it goes. I just figured something out. This is uh, facing the wrong way for the jack because this has got to be the other way. So what I'll have to do is I'll let it back down and then I guess I'll try and spin it and then pick it the other way. Oh, nothing's easy. Okay, something like that. Okay, after a lot of playing, I was able to finally get this bolted to the transmission jack to make sure that it doesn't uh, that it doesn't slide off of there. So with that, I think we can we can probably take this off. And let it down. we go okay ready to go in the truck all right so before I put the the transmission back obviously the if you watched the earlier episode you knew the reason I pulled the transmission out was not only that the input and output yokes were uh, loose the other reason the main reason was is because the seals were leaking and it was just spraying Transmission oil everywhere on the fuel tanks all the way back to the to the brake pots So I thought before we put the transmission in we'll clean this mess up a bit and I bought uh, I want to try two different things. So I bought the typical engine degreaser and uh, So that should work. Okay, but then uh, someone was commenting in an earlier episode I think the episode where I pulled the transmission out and said that they've had good luck with just an oven cleaner so I figure what I'm going to do is I'll do one side an engine degreaser and one side an oven cleaner and see which one works better. Building the bet that the engine degreaser was going to work better than the oven cleaner. I mean, I liked how the engine degreaser had a nice foam spray, but that's it. It just kind of smears the oil or the grease and uh, the oven cleaner actually cuts through it a lot better. So I actually think it's a better, a better product for this. So who would have thought, plus it was half price. The oven cleaner was five bucks and this was 10. So it's actually a better product and cheaper. So thank you to that viewer that made that comment. All right, so I'll keep grinding away down here. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a mask, it's because this is pretty strong smelling as you could probably imagine. But we're making progress, so that's good. Man, I wish I would have replaced that transmission or had it fixed before I started driving this thing, but I guess hindsight's always 2020. Like, look at that. Takes it off in one wipe. Yeah, oven cleaner, folks, that's the way to go. Okay, so these bushings that support the back end 
This goes up over the cross member just in front of the pogo stick there. And these old bushings were in here like this. And that sits on the on the cross member and supports the back end of the transmission. And then there's two bolt holes that the bolts go through. So the gear center was having a heck of a time trying to find these. This is not a, well to clarify, this truck wasn't actually a twin stick truck. <laughs> I know probably a lot of people are surprised, but originally it was a deep reduction 15 speed that somebody converted somewhere along the way. And so Lord only knows where this, this bushing came from. I don't know whoever put this in here might've just had these laying around and then cut these holes to fit these bushings. So the gear center was having, like I say, having a heck of a time trying to match them up. And uh, Steve over there at the gear center, he did the best he could. He actually found some motor mounts from Peterbilt that are reasonably close, probably as close as we can get. And he was such a great guy. I went over there and he actually said, for all the trouble, you can go ahead and keep these. So he didn't even charge me for them. So thank you for that. So anyway, they are a little taller. So I'll probably have to zip cut them off there. And then this diameter is a little bigger. So that's gonna take a little bit of work to, to take this diameter down so it fits in there. And then this is taller as well. So this is obviously squished down over time, but I imagine it's probably about half the thickness is what it originally was. So I'll have to zip cut this off as well. So these are gonna take some work to get these in here. But again, this is not a standard type of installation by any means. So we'll go ahead and play with these bushings and try and get them to fit in here. And then I think after that, we'll be able to, to slide under and see if we can't mount this on the truck. And then also I was up at my favorite Princess Auto and they had these on half price. Couldn't believe it. It's like 35 bucks instead of 70. And it's got a headrest on there and everything. So we'll set that up and I'll have a nice creeper to go rolling under the truck there instead of sliding on that cardboard. So anyway, let's talk more work, Mark. Look at the smoke, it's like pigs been doing burnouts in here. Okay, so it's not pretty, but it's functional. So I've just been using a little Milwaukee to nibble away and try and get this the right diameter. And we're getting pretty close now, but I've actually drained the battery. So while my batteries are gonna charge up, I figure I'll go on to the next thing. Now, the diameter of the of the dowel in the middle is 5 8 which is the next size up from the one that was in there. So what I'm actually going to have to do is drill a larger 5 8 hole in the cross member. I'll just do it from underneath to accommodate that larger bolt. So let's give that new big red creeper a try. Oh, well that's way easier than crawling in. Should have bought a creeper a long time ago. Okay, this even has an adjustable headrest. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's a wrist snapper. There it goes. There. Oh. Yeah, actually looking at this cross member, this is a homemade jobby here because there's the original Peterbilt aluminum cross member. And of course the sleeper bunks mounted too. And someone welded up this homemade special to support the back of the transmission. But this truck's been used since the, the 90s and it's pulled a lot of loads. So I guess if it's worked this long, no point changing it now. Okay, bushings are in. I think we're ready to try and give this a shove under the truck. I 
Okay, we're getting close. I put that strap in the front there just in case this jack fails and it's always good to have something that's going to catch this mess. That's where I need a helper. That's not bad. It's over the lip now. I just need to shimmy it a little. This is where it gets fun. In the pry bar. Okay, something like that. Uh, success. At least I got one started, so it should stay up there now. Oh, if I can get this started, hard to hold the camera in. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, huh. oh, well, now I know how to swap out a four speed auxiliary. You don't need impact sockets. Well, I'm going to call it a win. Oh, that was a bit of work to get that in there. Okay, so we got a few things left. We still got to put the, the U joints on and the drive shaft, finish up putting the bolts in there, and then fill it full of fresh oil. And that should just about be a wrap on that auxiliary transmission. So I'll continue working on that. And then I got a call from my awesome dad. He said he was going to come over and help me build some workbenches. So I pivoted away from the truck briefly and moved all my junk to one side to make space for that. So what I'm planning on doing is a 24 foot workbench and it'll come out two feet. I don't want to necessarily want to do a four foot workbench because I'm going to start to impede my walkway. So I'm thinking two feet deep and then a nice two foot shelf underneath for the entire distance should be adequate. And I thought two feet makes sense because of course we don't want to waste any of the lumber because that stuff is just stupid expensive right now. So we want to utilize every last bit of it. So we'll get those workbenches up and I can put all my, my junk back on there and we'll, we'll finish up this transmission. So lots going on this Saturday. Okay, so next I figured what I'd do is clean up the, the ends of the drive shaft here and this is the short drive shaft that goes between the six speed and the four speed auxiliary. And again, the whole point of doing all this was because that, that input shaft, well, I guess this is, this is four, this is a six speed and back here. But anyway, the, uh, if you remember the input yoke on the four speed was loose. So I figured it was probably dancing around in there and pounded out this U joint. So I thought since it's out, why not put some new Spicer U joints in there just to be safe. So we'll go ahead and clean this, clean up all the old grease and we'll, we'll install them here and then we can put the drive shot back in the truck. And special uh, shout out to Matthew. He was one of the, one of the fans that was watching me take the, the bumper off the front of the peat there and he thought, you know what Mark, you need a little, a little work stool. So he actually ordered this for me and had it shipped to my place. So thanks Matthew, I really appreciate that. <laughs> it's nice. Okay, let's get this cleaned up.
What do you think of those? Bad, huh? So instead of the, the two feet out, we elected to go 30 inches and then we just, it, whatever was left, I think it's 18 inches for the, the shelf underneath. But I think those look sharp. And unfortunately, my dad just didn't want to be filmed. A little camera shy, but thanks again, dad. Those are awesome. I can't wait to work on those. And I also wanted to highlight this. My brother-in-law made this for me over Christmas. He actually makes these, these crib boards. And he, uh, he actually used a 3D printer to cut that out and then put the epoxy in and the twin sticker ash. So, so thanks for that, Marty. I really appreciate it. Oh, okay. Well, now that those are built, I'm, uh, I guess I'm going to have to get back to working on the trucks. So got this drive shaft all ready to go. So we'll, we'll see if we can toss it back underneath there and finish this transmission project. Okay. Home stretch. <laughs> Strike shaft isn't very long, but it's stout. Okay. So I like covering up the caps with tape so they don't fall off. And I'm trying to wiggle this thing into place. But now we got to take them off in order to fit it through the yoke. Okay. Tilt it like that. <laughs> Don't wreck your train horns, Mark. Okay. A little bit of grease, sir. Don't mind the do. Now they have grease right from the factory, but I like to put a little extra in there. And of course I will fully grease it before we start driving it, but always good to put a little more in there. Okay, now that it's in place, it shouldn't fall and I can lay back on the creeper. And you get the idea. It's not the funnest job in the world. Oh, come on. Oh, whoop, whoop. Stay up there. One down. Three to go. <laughs> This job is unfun. <laughs> That's a, a lot of playing around to get this to work. <laughs> but we got them all in there now. <laughs> okay. Now, I think it's uh, 37 it calls for, foot pounds. But we'll do a, a nice even 40. Just to make sure they stay in there. 10, 12, 40, there we go. Lock. All right. That guy already was there. Oh yeah, those are the ones I'd already done on the back of the Duke. There we go. Okay. Okay, final step, put some fresh oil in there. So this was actually the pail that I caught the, the oil that I drained out of the transmission when I took it out of the truck. And that was new oil, that probably only had 100 miles on it, me just kind of driving it around. And I thought, you know what, I still, someone commented too, they said, don't put used oil back in that transmission. And I agree, the gear center worked too hard on it, replacing everything, so it deserves new oil. We'll put used oil in a, in a used transmission in one of my other trucks. So I went and picked up a new pail of this uh, Chevron uh, Sintrans HD uh, 50 weight. So it's a 50 weight synthetic transmission oil and it is not cheap. You don't even want to ask how much uh, this, this pail costs. 
but it works real well. So what, uh, what I'll do is I'll transfer the pump over to this and we'll put oil in there. And I think we're just about gonna call it a, call it a day. It's getting awfully late. Yeah, there it is. Oh, isn't that pretty? You know what? I got a lot of shop dust on this. I'm gonna clean that off there before we flip it over. Yeah, I mean, the oil in there still looks, looks exactly the same, but again, better to put new stuff in a newly built transmission. That's one big fill plug. to do upside down holding the camera so we'll just put that guy in there ah uh, that's nice worked up a thirst doing all this all right well we'll finish filling up this transmission and I think that's going to be it. We're ready to take it for a test drive. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode and don't ever forget if you got it, the trucker brought it. <laughs>